All right. Hi, everyone. We are going to go through looking at descriptive statistics using JMP Guide Lesson 4. Now, one thing you might want to do, you might want to like get your phone or your iPad or your spouse's laptop or a different laptop or something. Watch the video on that laptop or device, and then you go through on your computer step by step how to do this. It's very important you set your preferences and uh, that everyone watches this video. All right, so what you will do, you will just open your JMP and you just go to uh, preferences. Where is it? Where's preferences? There it is, preferences. All right, then you're gonna, you know, it's probably gonna be at general. You're gonna go to platforms. This is all written on the JMP guide as well, but I'm walking you through it here. Um, you're gonna go to distribution. All right, just, just distribution, plain old distribution. Now you're going to make sure that it says horizontal layout. So the histograms we're going to be looking at later needs to be on his horizontal layout. You need to make sure that uh, check separate bars. All right, I don't see that on here, do y'all? Check separate bars. Well, maybe that's on a separate place. Or so. Oh, there it is, separate bars right there. All right, so then we are going to hit OK, or actually let's hit Apply. I think that's safer. Let's hit Apply. Now you're going to go to Distribution Summary Statistics. And you're going to make sure we have mean, median. Where's median? Okay. Standard deviation, variance, yes. Skewness, yes. Kurtosis, yes. We are going to learn how to look at kurtosis and skewness quite a bit. That's all correct. So we're going to hit apply. Great. All right, now our preferences are set. If you have, it might be because your preferences were set. Now we're going to look at the fitness data sets. What, let's say that I just want to look at descriptive data for weight. All right, so I'm going to go to analyze, distribution, and I'm going to take weight and I can slide it over here as the Y in the Y column or let's see, I could remove it. Um, another way I could have done that is by clicking just the Y button. All right, click OK. And then we have this analysis come up. Now, what you're going to be looking for here on down the road is you're going to be looking to see are these distributions fairly normal? You're gonna learn that we have to meet a lot of assumptions uh, before we can just do a t-test or before we conduct an ANOVA. We've gotta look at norma normal distributions. And so to do that, we look at a histogram and you're reading about histograms in the Hatcher book, but we wanna make sure that this looks for like, kind of like a bell curve, pretty much, all right? And so that's what, that's what this is. What this is doing is it's showing you that most scores here, most scores are between 75 and 80, and hopefully that's kilograms, <laughs> okay, because that can't be pounds. All right, so most people's weight is here. We have a few people on the high end, a few people on the low end, all right? So that's something that we're looking at. I'll teach you in the next video how to look more at the specific parts um, of that histogram. All right, uh, let's look at what in the world is this thing. This is a box and whisker plot. You know, you learn how to do this in middle school too. Um, but the median is actually this line here. That's the median. And then quartile one is right here. All right, and so it actually shows you 
the first quartile is at the 70, uh, a weight of 73, and that is indeed where this first quartile falls. So that means 25% of scores fall below a 73, not scores, weight, sorry, weight. And then this is the third quartile, and that quartile shows that 75% um, of people have weight less than 82.78, all right? So most scores fall within those quartiles. 50% of scores do. Now, this interquartile range, uh, I was trying to play around with what formula they used. Um, basically, what I want you to know is that if there are scores on the outside of these lines, that means they could be potential outliers, but it doesn't look like we have any, and so that's probably okay. I'll show you, show you another one of these in a minute, but uh, where the triangle is, the triangle shows where the mean is. Well, in this case, the, I mean, like the tips, where my fingers are, the tips of the triangle show the mean. And so here, the mean and the median are very close to each other. And so hopefully um, you will watch my video soon or you've already watched it uh, about descriptive statistics and if, if the mean and the median are close, that means it's, it's, it's probably going to be a normal distribution, there, or at least there's not going to be much skewness. Uh, so they're pretty close to each other. You will be using this to create tables for your descriptive statistics. And so when you need to know the means and the standard deviations of things, that's what this is right here. That's the standard devi That's the mean and standard deviation. Um, sometimes you'll see in articles that it'll show confidence intervals, and this means that um, we are 95% confident that this mean is a true mean, um, but it's the somewhere between the 74 and an 80. That's what that means. Really what I want you to pay attention to is this right here. You will need to be reporting those scores. You will often have to look at uh, variance, skewness, kurtosis, that's all found right here. So we do that, I'm gonna lead you through this again and I'll show you how to do this with more than one thing. So you can go to analyze, distribution, and let's say we wanna look at several variables. Um, notice for for this kind of data, it's got to be continuous data. I can't choose any of my nominal categorical variables to find the mean. Like, it won't even do that. It won't even let you do that. So let's say I want to look at several different things. I'm just going to click a bunch of them at the same time and throw them in here. Click OK. And, and it conducted several different ones. So I can, like, skim through and look at a whole bunch of them. Isn't that neat? Okay, so let's look at something else like age. All right, now looking at this histogram, it doesn't look so beautiful. You know, it doesn't look like that as normal as you would want it to. So I've got to look at it a little more carefully. Well, look, the mean is um, below the median. You see where those triangles are? So the mean is 47. That's the people's age here. The median is 48. They're still pretty close though, okay? And so if you'll remember the formula for skewness is mean minus median. So that's going to give us a negative number, and indeed skewness is negative. So this is a little bit negatively skewed where um, there's a little more skinny on this side of the distribution. But it still looks fairly normal to me. It doesn't look like any outliers are an issue. And it looks like most scores fall between, uh, most ages are between 44 and 52. And that's what 
this little bar and this little bar mean? And I'm pretty sure that this red line represents the confidence intervals of the mean score. Is that what that means? Mm, I don't know. I've had conversations with Dr. Weimers about this. I don't think we've settled on an answer. Um, Cause if that was the case, then Is that at 45? I don't know. I can't tell. 45 and 52. I don't think that's correct. So I'll have to figure that out later. All right. So that is how you find your descriptive statistics. That's it. Thanks a lot. See you later.